Schwartz with 360 Yield Center here. I want to talk to you a little bit about tissue testing. Why do we tissue test? Well, there's two real reasons. Uh, number one, if you see deficiencies or bad spots showing up in your field, you want to know why. So uh, you'll, you can go pull tissue tests and help diagnose the problem. I would suggest don't tissue test when you see a problem. Don't wait till the problem to appear, but go test before so you can help prevent that problem occur. Okay? Um, when? Here's what I would tell you. You can tissue test in soybeans all the way up to mid pod fill and in, in uh, corn up to brown silk, but I would tell you, you want to you wanna tissue test earlier, again, because we're trying to prevent problems from happening. Uh, as far as how? couple things. If you see an issue in the field, make sure you collect samples from the bad areas, just inside the bad areas, and the good areas to compare. Also, I really recommend that you pull soil samples from the same areas you pull the tissue test. And the reason you should do that is because it helps the folks di diagnose and correlate the soil to the tissue. In other words, there could be a nutrient deficiency showing up but there could be plenty of the nutrient in the soil. Maybe it's dry weather, maybe it's compaction, maybe it's uh, we planted and we have hatchet roots. There's lots of reasons that can lead to these deficiencies, symptoms. So pulling soil samples helps with correlation. As far as stages, here's what you should understand. I guess when it relates to corn, if it's a V5 or V6 plant, take the entire plant. Some labs will ask for the roots. Make sure you wash off the roots if you do that. Um, as far as soybeans, you can take, if it's a V6 plant, take the entire plant. For corn, once you get to up to about tasseling, then you want to take the first leaf that is uh, first mature leaf below the, the whorl that has a full collar. So this is about a V10, V12 corn plant. That's why I'm going to take this leaf up to about tasseling. Now, once we get to about 50% silk, then you're going to want to take the ear leaf off of that plant. For soybeans, again, once it gets past about the five or six trifoliate, then you're going to take the, the youngest mature leaf, not the petioles. As far as how much to sample, I would say, if you, let's say you got two areas in a field, um, at least when they're younger, at least 20 plants, okay? And when they get uh, this big, you know, 15 to 20 leaves is enough. Same with soybean plants, at least 20 to 30 of the leaves on a mature, uh, when it's the youngest mature leaf. Uh, 20 plants when they're smaller is fine. Again, where... Uh, if let's say I don't see a deficiency in this field, well, I still want to know, for instance, this has been very dry. I want to know what's going on in my dry, coarser textured soils because I'm going to suspect I could start seeing things like boron or potassium or sulfur showing up. So I'm going to tissue test that, that area separately from the good area. Um, and then again, pull those soil cores to help make the correlation. Um, uh, as far as when, uh, in fact, let me do this. Let's talk about what not to do. Don't take samples that are damaged mechanically, insect, or diseases. Don't take samples uh, next to a road that's deposited a lot of dust or gravel dust on them. Don't wash the leaves off. That can lead to issues. So try to take samples that are fairly clean, fairly dry. Um, ship them in a brown paper sack. Your lab can help, uh, help with all the instructions on that. But just know that I think the important thing is that as you're thinking about tissue testing, let's try to run the tests correlate it with soil tests, and let's try to be proactive so that we're preventing an issue, not reacting to one.